Welcome to the Haunted Show. Today our guest is Mr. Savio Furtado. He's an exorcist, a paranormal researcher and investigator and uh, he has 20 years of experience in this. So Mr. Savio, welcome to the podcast. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. So any other case or any other experience which you have felt or in this thing, you know, any place you have been to or did something happen with your own family or with you something like that if you want to share. happens all the time <laughs> yeah happens all the time i mean earlier it used to happen a lot okay. more than how it is happening now because now i have learned the nuts and bolts yeah. of what exactly happens and that's the reason now i'm much more better prepared yeah. for it earlier it was just a sort of a hit and run or trial and error sort of a thing yeah. i remember one case which was i think 5 years ago 5 or 6 6 6 7 years ago i guess it was um yeah i remember that because my daughter was 1 year old around 1 year old at that point of time there was this case from uk mm. that had come and the place was haunted mm. uh we got to know it why because she said that wherever they had two small children mm. and they were like say about uh, below 1 year old or one or two years old between that only they were very small and whenever they, wherever these this that boy there was a boy and a girl wherever that boy used to sit there used to be a bulb that is shattering behind him bursting no matter if it's a tube light or an led or whatever mm. it just get fused and sometimes just burst into flames mm. and that girl also whenever she used to step out in, in the in the house and all she would always notice someone walking through the window or in the gallery mm. and she used to cry and both of these used to cry all the time mm. earlier obviously they thought that it was coincident mm. but uh, then they they started noticing the pattern that wherever i'm placing this boy Mm. if there is a light source behind him it's mm. getting burst mm. so then afterwards they started approaching us mm. and i guess uh, uh, pooja was approached first uh, for this and as we usually do she shared the case and the photographs along with me mm. and told us to read we were reading the case mm. and there i saw a multiple uh, uh, anomalies over there and i saw the entity which is there mm. uh, disturbing them <clears throat> and that entity somehow had i don't know grudge over the previous family or whatever like that and it was continuing the grudge even on this family mm. and that house since it was purchased with them recently mm. showed a lot of um, these problems mm. and it was not just that it was like a black magic performed on them mm. i i don't know i mean i just got this uh, reading from that that you know what there are some gifts given to them okay there are some articles given to them which were not paid back for they were mm. like gifts mm mm-hmm. and those things were causing issues mm. and that is when she herself from the front i mean when i read this she herself from the front she came and told me yeah this is right because there are some articles that were sent to her mm. and uh, those medicines and everything could be found everywhere but yet those were gifted to her mm. and there were like old certificates and everything like that the old photographs which are gifted to her which was weird because there was no need to give anybody just like that i mean i have tons of my photograph why would somebody else give me mm. physical photographs mm. and that's when i said yeah i mean so you sent photographs of those articles and i'll read even those and when i read those articles correctly i saw that their entity had enter- entered the house using those articles as trigger objects okay and then afterwards they asked me whether you know what uh, should i burn them I said no burning them is not the solution because that will just release the entity and it will latch on to anything else mm. so we need to dispose them off in a very good way and then after we had to perform a cleansing over there now in the middle of this i was just in the process of reading it mm. okay i have not even started cleansing because this pooja's case and pooja was very good in doing the cleansing and everything like that so i was just giving my reading at that point of time preliminary that this is, this is exactly how it is mm. and you f- perform it but then what happened one day as i just holding on to my daughter's hand mm. when she had just learned how to walk a little bit and I was just going in the society so when i was walking in the society out of nowhere a pile of bricks fell just next to her on the ground and surprisingly it didn't harm her mm. it didn't just you know splash onto her if it had just deviated on her she would have got harmed and i still get goosebumps thinking over you know what if i would have walked just one feet closer to the wall it would have fallen upon her yeah and i don't know what would have happened so i just went few steps ahead just thinking that it might be coincidence mm. but then after that i turned my psychic senses on and i said no this is something more than it mm. then i just took a u turn and came back home mm. now what happens at home when i reach home is the moment i reach home my tube light bursts first thing and then after that even the kitchen light goes off and my wife was like cooking inside and she said what is happening i said you know what let it be just switched off let's not mend it up right now whatever work you have to do you either burn a candle or whatever and do that or you don't do it mm. 
and then after us i contacted pooja to ask if certain things are happening at her place and the same things were happening in her place there were things that were flung off her dining table there were things that, there were lights in the alley that were going off flickering and going off and i just told her you know what this entity is trying to contact us now on an urgent basis it's not about that family it's about this entity right now and we need to deal it because we cannot just have everything just blow off in our houses mm-hmm. like just like that so at that point of time i took the phone and i was chatting along with her dealing along with the entity she also from her side me also from my side we are all the lights and everything is off or off at home and i keep walking in the area now we i reach a place wherein there was a common cabin with all the meters that catch caught fire all of a sudden mm. and everybody's light just went off mm. and everybody is wondering what is happening and i th- at that point of time i acknowledged the presence of this entity mm. and telepathically i told him you know what i know that you're there and you don't need to do all these things mm. right let's settle this on a one to one basis and that fire just went off can mm. you imagine that a, mm-hmm. an electrical yeah, yeah. fire just yeah. going off is yeah. a very unusual thing yeah. it just went off and everybody's electricity was uh, restored these are incidents that you have to take place but there are a lot of things that happened at home after this and then after we t- dealt along with that entity and uh, uh, peacefully in a very peaceful manner because it was a very angry entity mm. which we changed the aura mm. and had to cross over it and mm. uh, after that till date i think so this is like 7 f- years ago till date there is no complaint from that house at all now there are no bulbs and lights that are getting shattered there is no mm. visions or uh, um, occult visions that are seen by those kids there is mm. nothing over there at all mm. so everything is peaceful mm. peaceful but these are the cases where people have seen these entity or felt something around you know in their house or something like that but there are some cases where you know so you are an exorcist and there are some cases of exorcism as well can you share any of that cases or any experiences yeah, yeah. exorcism is different from cleansing a location yeah. only that you know the haunting take place in a location on inanimate yeah. objects yeah. right and possession takes place in a person who is living that's yeah. the only difference there are energy there are an, um, mm. a foreign energy or an entity which is latched on to either a person or finds a, a location yeah worthy enough to be uh, mm. sojourning at mm. so possession is just a different form of a haunting of haunting yeah but sometimes it happens that after some time because you that entity has latched on to you mm. is is eating into your aura mm. and more often than not than after after some time it takes control over you mm. Mm. right so after some time you are no longer your same person mm. you're a changed person mm. your mannerisms your behavior mm. your likes your dislikes your triggers mm. your emotions everything keep changing mm. and you'll certainly find people telling you after 6 months that you have to change hua hai mm. you've changed there is something about you you were not so angry before or you were not so depressed before what exactly happened and you will not know anything about it because mm. this this entire possession was very gradual mm. you didn't know exactly when it seeped into you yeah. and what happened as an exorcist I have to find that trigger when exactly did it happen okay so it is not always like it's not always sudden like when we say jo mata aa jati hai wo exactly us time pe dikh jata you know you can see that in a moment you know they changed drastically but gradually i had no clue about this also that did happens gradually also person to person matters and yeah. what you're talking about is a manifestation yeah. manifestation can take time yeah. and as you said mata ana that can be immediate immediate yeah. but it is never really immediate the yeah. manifestation is is sudden yeah. but it took time for that lady to get possessed yeah so at some point of time it must have crept in her mind that if mm. i do this i might get respect in the family i might get respect in the society yeah. so i need to do this mm. and at that point of time it will start getting knowledge mm. or mm. information about everyone yeah. and then at a certain point of time after say about a year or two when everything is ready then she mm. comes and say, i mean you know suddenly acts like possessed mm. and tells you know what i can see this in you i can see this in you but mm. that was a matter of research over the past 2 years that she mm. has put yeah. into right yeah. and i say this is a possibility this is not always real mm. got different possessions so different things really do happen mm. he that person might be uh, possessed demonically mm. yeah right but the manifestation happens suddenly only after the demon has taken complete control over you and mm. you start acting in a very mm. different manner mm. so what you spoke about suddenly is only the manifestation mm. otherwise it can be very subtle do you by this do you mean that demons have more power than the good souls not more power but more manipulation power so they can manipulate your body into doing different things okay right and when a demon affects you mm. it will use that power from you it mm. will not care whether your 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 body is conserved or not or stayed in tune or not mm. it will display that you superhuman strength in everything mm. so i would say a demonic possession or an angelic possession mm. 
is it has more manipulative powers mm. not really su- uh, physical or supernatural yeah. powers than us okay that is what happens okay and the cases you were telling me about the one case about the exorcism yeah. yeah there was one relapse i would like to talk about yeah. uh, now this person i mean the first case the first time when he was uh, exorcised and that time i was not there mm. but i'd seen photographs of it and uh, you know uh, people retelling me about whatever he had done mm. at that point of time he was puking all over the place mm. he was vomiting all over the place making it look as dirty as possible so that people might not control him mm. and he was lifting up sofas and uh, sofa sets and even uh, chairs for that matter and flinging them left right and center mm. because he had nothing to do along with that house mm. so he was like that and he was speaking in different voices and he was also quoting from religious texts mm. so the demon was really very powerful in him and the people who exorcised him at that point of time had to do a lot of things mm. had to completely calm him down had him restrained mm. physically and restraining such a person is not very easy because he's showing superhuman strength so that case that i spoke about this person was first having to be restrained physically and mm. somehow the exorcism took place and it was good but mm. it was good only for say about 8 months mm. because after 8 months this person again started manifesting and uh, showing the same sort of symptoms that he was when he was possessed mm. Mm. and at that point of time now this person was brought to me mm. and when he was brought to me i tried to find the trigger as to where it happened and what happened exactly mm. i found his uh, um, his his situation was just speaking with him like a friend he was sitting very next to me mm. and i was trying to know exactly what happened with him where it happened with him just trying to find a trigger why this possession has come back again mm. and this is something i'll speak to you later also about mm. so he was just speaking with me like a friend and he is just ready to manifest he mm. is just looking down his eyes have rolled up he's got mm. completely bloodshot eyes mm. and he is like just clutching on to my sofa mm. and he wants to manifest but every point of time because and because this is of my experience with neuro linguistic programming mm. with hypnotic therapy and all those things this really helped me to read his face his body language and everything and every time he's trying to manifest i'm just put patting my on his shoulder and all are chhodna wo chhodna i need to speak about something else and i'm just trying to talk to him something else mm. and i'm not letting the demon take control over him mm. Mm. i'm just bringing his memory down to something else mm. and do you remember this thing do you remember that thing whatever like that i'm just talking with him and his entire energy is focused elsewhere mm. and i don't let the demon take control over him mm. 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 and this is exactly how in a very peaceful manner without mm. him having to manifest and going through all that drama mm. that the exorcism was taken place mm. and this is where in the, in the this was like um, i mean a lot st- i mean at the start which i started um, exorcisms this mm. is when i realized that exorcisms can also happen without a lot of drama and doesn't have to always happen the way it is shown in movies in movies correct yeah. always mm. you don't have to manifest you don't have to restrain a person you don't mm. have to take all that and throw at a person and all mm. Mm. or a probably a holy book and try to mm. you know or a cross that like people think okay. it's not really required what, what is the tr- trigger like is it a memory or is it a place where he has been or the person has been or anything it anything. can be anything a trigger can be anything okay it can be a tap on his hand it can be a rap it can be the mm. same situations or a temperature which is maintained at that point of time wherein he got that it mm. can be anything a trigger can be anything for oh. a manifestation mm. it might be personal for that person but i want to know Uh, if you can tell us that what was the trigger of that person i mean was that was that a place was that someone else who did it to him or was it a memory like nothing it was a mix of all those things mm. uh, he had financial issues okay he was working in the middle east okay and at that point of time somebody else took advantage of him and put him back in the food chain completely lower mm. and the um, the feeling of being suppressed mm. started becoming a feeling that is oppressed Mm. and then afterwards instead of just suppressing himself mm. he started showing these symptoms of getting possessed because that is how he could have everybody else under control okay and the demon started seeping more deep, deeply into him mm-hmm. and that is what his trigger was so if anybody would try to restrain him or try to show him that what you're thinking is wrong mm-hmm. right you're incorrect at this point of time he wouldn't take criticism very lightly mm-hmm. and that was his trauma so i remember this case from pune that mm-hmm. had come uh, um, a lady from pune appro- approached me and uh, she had two children mm. who belonged into relatives mm. and these kids were kept over there and suddenly they found a lot of paranormal activity or abnormal activity taking place at home mm. like books being flung mm. out of nowhere yeah. uh, garden pots being shattered mm. glasses being shattered and all those things were happening at that place uh, the tv suddenly changing uh, channels and everything like that and when i got uh, you know 
approached i asked her for the photographs of the entire place mm. and asked her the photographs of those two kids also who were mm. living i mean everybody for that matter now at that point of time she hadn't told me that it is these two children who are actually possessed she just found that it was like a haunting certain certain things that were happening at her place so i asked i mean my routine procedure i asked my own questions and i asked him to give, give a photograph of everyone when i analyzed the photograph of the place i felt there is nothing abnormal about it mm. so there shouldn't be such activities taking place but when i analyze the photograph of these people i found that these two kids are the ones who are causing all these things so we went in a very pragmatic manner what i said is you know what you change your location for a few days and see if this follows you mm. so she changed her position a location she went to a new house mm. and these things started taking place even over there mm. now i said okay fine now let's part the family Mm. so you keep your daughter along with you and these two kids are a different place to a mm. different relatives mm. and let's see whom these things follow and the activity started following those two children those mm. two boys and i immediately got to know it is about them as much as in my preliminary reading that i had yeah. always got and to tell you my reading still now i mean i've done a lot of thousand, probably more than a thousand readings my reading even one reading hasn't come wrong till now because i have a very yeah. different approach to reading yeah. and yes. data yeah, i wanted to actually ask that how do you read so correctly and what is the, this thing yeah, about yeah I'll, I'll get to that yes so then after we had a different approach. by by mm. then mm. the relatives those the, the mother and the father the parents of mm. those two kids call them back and they were mm. back in bihar mm. now bihar is too much a distance for me to just go and just perform an exorcism over there and these people were deep rooted in their beliefs in religion mm. so they started calling babas and tantrics and everybody at home mm. and this thing actually escalated the problem mm. because every time a baba and a tantric would come home mm. that problem would take care of itself only in a day Hmm. for a day hmm. and after that again the manifestation would be much more stronger hmm. so there were things being flown left right and center and they actually now behaving possessed hmm. previously they were very calm, calm and yeah. only things being flung hmm. now it was them who was doing all these hmm. things hmm. and according to them it used to take them at least five six people to restrain one boy hmm. so can you imagine throughout the day there is somebody from the village and the family who is already restraining them the moment they are yeah. left they are manifesting yeah yeah but one very interesting thing that they told me is mm. during the play time mm. they aren't doing anything wrong mm. they are nicely playing mm. but apart from that all the other times they are manifesting mm. so i first i told them you know what just get them checked by a proper doctor counselor and then get them whatever restraint and they didn't believe in that because they were believing in a baba and a tantric yeah. why because every time these people used to come home they used to get healed mm. so i said okay fine theek hai so if you want it that way so let it be that way so on a video call I had them made a video call and I ministered to these people mm. both the kids I looked at them both and I spoke with them mm. and I also spoke to the demons that are there in them mm. I manifested over there and I I completely cleansed them out of that place mm. right and after that the manifestations went low mm. and I told them you know what this is still not done mm. because I wasn't given permission because I believe more in the science and the logic of the mm. fact and the ma- matter whereas these people used to believe in the religious mm. aspect mm. so after performing the exorcism mm. they were all clear mm. but still as i said they were prone to new possessions mm. so i told them that you need to treat them like children mm. and you need to get them counseled by a person mm. whoever you call it now mm. and now the baba or the tantric or whoever you call at home mm. will leave a lasting impression because now the exorcism is done, done. what he has to do is just do the counseling part of it and leave yeah okay so when the baba came ne- the, the other day after that all this manifestation stopped mm. it was exactly how it was yeah. like how how it, how it spoken about it mm. so mm. this thing happened so these things happen over a distance and mm. things mm. and i want to know like how do you read so correctly i want to to ask this question because the things that the cases you have talked about and also we were chatting about this before we started shooting that you know when you go and visit some places you like to you want to read what plans are saying you know you feel them what is what is that thing here i found it very very interesting so i just want our audience to know about this thing because i am sure that many people don't even know that this exists yeah a uh, reading is a very different thing yeah. altogether now when we talk about reading yeah if you're reading a book yeah and you're reading a certain paragraph yeah right no matter even if 10 people read the paragraph they will read it the same way yeah 
what they understand out of it is a different thing yeah. but whatever words are written are written yeah. so it has to be read in that particular same way exactly. so if one paranormal investigator is going over there mm. and he is feeling a female en- entity mm. and a, another person comes over there and he is feeling like a war took place over here mm. and a third paranormal investigator goes over there and says that i don't feel there is anything over here mm. that means they are not reading mm. they are falling back upon their own inferences about that place mm. Mm. but there is a certain amount of data that is written over there mm. right and this is how we i actually get my readings accurate is because mm. when you go to a certain place mm. you have to acknowledge the fact mm. that everything that is there mm. even the furniture and the entire infrastructure has a ton load of data written in it mm. right as i said the human is a much more superior machine than mm. any other gadgetry that you can make mm. so the way we read things has to be analyzed and learned what mm. are there in our nerve endings over there billions of nerve endings in our hands mm. so when we place our hand mm. it is much more easier to read or decode this data than mm. only holding a mic to it or mm. probably scanning through a laser mm. a laser will be able to scan probably a barcode mm. because it has been encoded like that mm. but what if a certain thing is not a barcode mm. the laser will not be able to read it mm. but our hands knowing exactly how the universe works because we have been born mm. along with the universe mm. we will be able to read it better mm. So what I do is when I go to certain locations I'll first take photographs and read the energy mm. when I go to that place I will read the surfaces over there and our surfaces vary yeah. some places there are uh, igneous rocks being used for construction <clears throat> some places there are uh, synthetic materials being used some places there are glasses some pe- places there are sedimentary rocks and everything there are different type of rocks like red uh, laterite rocks or probably yellow sandstone rocks and different things granite mm. marble so every rock and every material will have a different way of encoding the data mm. and it depends on whether there's brick little porous or whatever that how long the data will be stored mm. if you are adept and if you have trained yourself on how to read this data mm. it becomes easier mm. then you don't go and just lay your hand everywhere just like that and try mm. to read data but you know now you fine tuned yourself on how to read data from different surfaces mm. that is why my reading is always accurate whenever mm. i go somewhere i try to read this mm. and i try to see if it has been over written by another Mm. big incident that has taken place mm. suppose at a certain place if there is a crime taken place and mm. that is takes precedent over everything else mm. so the data the crime is written in that place mm. but suppose after that there was a much more bigger incident that took place mm. then the previous memory m- might get erased and the mm. new memory will be over it mm. so at that point of time i will not know if there is anything mm. and that's the reason different paranormal investigators go to different places mm. and they get different readings mm-hmm. because Correct. they get different feelings over it but mm. they have not really read whether this things have happened or not there will be from mm. some fragments that are there everywhere mm-hmm. and this is what brings us to residual haunting mm. every haunting is not the same mm. there are some which are intelligent there are some which are residual residual is a residue mm. so there is data written in all these things right yeah. and if i if i find a woman who is walking from here mm. and that data is written over here mm. in some favorable condition what happens is automatically some conspiracy of the universe is that data is decoded mm. and you will see that woman again walking here although mm. that woman is not there just a ghost of the woman but then only a trained paranormal investigator yeah. will know whether a thing is residual mm. or is it intelligent yeah when you ask questions and the response come then it is it is intelligent intelligent so yeah. that is exactly where we go with our gadgets and we start doing mm-hmm. those investigations mm-hmm. and we don't recommend doing these communications because the more you communicate to the other side the mm-hmm. more prone you become to get mm-hmm. an attachment mm-hmm. okay. like for example if we go to a dhaba mm-hmm. and if there is a dog around that place mm-hmm. and if i throw a chicken piece mm. the next day the dog knows okay fine this person is mm. good and will throw and he will mm. come to me mm. right but on the first day itself if i ignore that dog mm. the next day the dog knows he is not going to get anything mm. so he will not pester me mm. at the same time if i drive away that dog or throw a stone at the dog the mm. next day i go to the dhaba the dog will bark at me mm. thinking that i am a very evil entity mm. so the same thing happens with these invisible entities as well mm. if you completely ignore their presence don't mm. acknowledge their presence they have nothing to do with you yeah mm. but if at all you acknowledge their presence and you talk to them mm. they find a confidant they find a friend and they will then pursue you mm. so what we say in in our paranormal industry and to everybody is don't venture into investigations and talking to communicate i mean the dead people mm. just like that mm. because you never know what lies ahead when you i just want to know that some suppose if there's a person who's driving and you know there's a place a jungle kind of a place and uh, he feels something you know uh something around him you know when he's passing by and in the jungles he saw something hmm. what at that moment what should a person do that is the safest option for that person what do you think about that 
because there's so many people who just get scared and you know they do things which actually is bad for them and gets them into a bad situation so what is the be- best uh, way to do that anything that you would do to avert an accident yeah <clears throat> if you drive too fast yeah your response time to uh, another person who's crossing the street is very less yeah right so if you drive pretty at a good constant speed yeah. or a slow speed mm. then what happens is you might avert any accident so if you see any vision mm. you're well in time you can stop before that yeah. and check for yourself whether that was real mm. or it was something occult okay but, but not but if you're not driving you're just walking by i didn't mean that you know only driving only but mm-hmm. you're at some place and you saw something do you just turn your back and just move from there or you should be there and be confident what what is the because people who are not experienced with these things you know mm-hmm. people who are who are very scared and you know who are not brave uh, so at that point at that, that exact point what is the safest option for them to not get into a bad situation now when you're asking me this question yeah. <clears throat> i'm assuming that you've already decided whether it is real yeah or paranormal yeah right if it all it is real then i mean you obviously take the uh, precautions mm. to be careful watch over your back and see if this person is not attacking me or not mm. following me for any other uh, mm. ulterior motive okay. right and if it's a girl then there are more chances and there are more things mm. to l- take care of mm. but if all, if at all you know okay fine this is not real and this is paranormal mm. what we say is just move on move mm. just move on just forget about whatever happened over there mm. and don't pay too much attention to it okay. because they can't really harm you just like that okay they're just ghosts of things that were already there okay. and as i said we are more powerful because we have a body a density yeah. they just cannot do that when we go for our paranormal investigations they take so much of energy to just show that one spike and just mm. light that one led okay and you think this entity who's mm. who has to spend so much of energy because they don't have a body no they mm. don't have a switch mm. so to turn on the switch they don't have anything so you think that this person who is spending so much of energy to light one led bulb mm. can actually come and hold you they mm. cannot okay they cannot so mm. you just forget about them you know okay fine they're there around mm. just move on mm. don't acknowledge their presence like i said even once before mm. that if at all you get frightened yeah at that place then you're leaving your auric field open for them to attach mm-hmm. so you don't really do that you just ignore them mm. dismiss them from your presence and just move about hmm. and they will feel okay fine yaar iske peeche ja ke koi matlab hi nahi hai correct correct all right i think that's the best way we could conclude this podcast thank you so much mr savio for this conversation i want to say that i have talked to many people about these things and you know i have talked other people also talking about these things but humme bahut mota mota idea hota hai kuch upar upar se baaton ka pata hota hai you know but you have actually told the deep knowledge about it and the nuts and bolts about all of these things and i really love the conversation thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and i'm uh, sure that audience here have loved the conversation too and gained uh, knowledge which they can't gain from anybody else uh, so thank you so much for watching the haunted show i'm your host shivang rajpal like share comment subscribe and see you again <laughs>